Yeah, he's kind of perfect for, because he can sort of talk to all things connected. Okay. Which, that's what I 
I'm not putting words in your mouth. But <laughs> I was yeah. like, where are we going? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, that's cool. And I told him we'll probably just you know piggyback off of whatever the governor has to say. Anything else you guys want to add? But. Um, yeah, and, and um, I'm probably kind of just, because I could talk, if there was any kind of guard-specific <laughs> thing. This is live, just so you know. Okay. Just yeah, if there's any guard-specific thing, I could fill in the gaps. Okay. If there's something that someone's supposed to do for a guard angle. Yeah. Instead of doing so. <laughs> I just don't want to say anything, you know. Um, I'll teach you for... He's doing some sort, right? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> After I curse four times, if I even know what I'm... So... He's doing some sort yeah. of video, it's just not really Oh, yeah, right. He's not yeah. doing like uniform when he's yeah. on uniform. And that's checking for hair plus clothes. Literally. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, uh, we, uh, we should have... We did do all this. I don't know if you guys have to get back to the No, that's new. I, mean, I, I think we do. I know that's where I've gotten a lot of stuff. And uh, one of our old reporters, Tim, he was the... Uh, yeah, Tim Jules. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's where he. I've gotten a lot of stuff from him. So, okay, perfect. Um, I don't know. Is there, is there a user or log in there? Or is it just a... I think it's individual-based. Okay. Correct. You can your attention for a second. So it just wrapped up. He's uh, getting some notes together and everything uh, from the meeting. So we'll be in here in a few minutes. So go ahead. Keep talking. Yeah, I <laughs> check three two one testing my check three two one just say this. Yeah. I'll text you. Okay. Same spot as you. Um. We all know for here.
Good, Jess? Yes, <laughs> you just become a buddy, it's not great. I love you guys. <laughs> supposed to be doing oh, I'm so sorry. What, how many meals ready to eat? How many bottles of water do you have? So strange. <laughs> 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 
No. I won't break much. Yes, you will. Something you can put in the new. So it doesn't have to be something. Oh, does he make up fake things? No, he would not do that. Do you have you all heard of freaking out like Charles? It's a wall. Yeah, it's a wall. Yeah, it's a wall. It won't sound dumb. Who's Jimmy Cantor? You know that channel. I don't get to watch it. Oh, it's okay. It's really hard. I'll take it down. What we've done, we have notified all of yeah. our, our five stock owners farmers. Make the preparations <laughs> to move their livestock and move yeah. their equipment. Yeah. 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 yeah, a little bit like yeah. Charles Nasty. And just vitamins or just no, 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 no. across the entire coast. Yeah. And was, uh, also yeah. yesterday yeah. I spoke yeah. to under Secretary Bill Moore, the head of risk management. Risk management. had a discussion. About the potential impact of the storm. So what about your pet? I also, yeah, okay. We also met, I also met and spoke with uh, risk managers on Monday. Monday. On Monday. About the potentials of the new not only uh, in the hurricane season, but also as a result of the elevated levels of all of our water. So it's not only Mississippi, it's the land, it's the Washington, it's all the water systems that chapel out. Our pet evacuation, we are moving cages and equipment to the mega shelter. And our mobile evacuation units are ready, prep, and staff. Where's the mega shelter? Alexander. Is it, is it housed in a certain place? Yeah, it's at the Dean Lee Research. Remember Dean Lee? Yeah, D-E-A-N. D-E-A-N. Lee facility. It is the name of the facility. Is it your point here? No, no, it's called the, uh, it's also the state of your head center. Okay, that's my other program. That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm but it's the way, it's the very large uh -huh. yeah. 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 That's correct. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Because I know they're evacuated. Have you ever been there before? Uh, yeah, last year. Yeah. Yeah. They're moving it. Oh, that's the first time. Five years. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
because they're losing a lot of other areas. That's going to be, isn't that the DeWitt Center? Is that right? Isn't that the DeWitt Center? Charles Paul. Charles Paul. Isn't that the DeWitt Center? You're talking about in Alexander? In Alexander, yes. The DeWitt Center. I thought it was the Dean Lee. Well, it's that Dean Lee Station. Oh. Goodness, I think it's the DeWitt Center and Dean Lee Station. We have actual news here. Yeah, I'm from LA. Where in LA? Glendale. Where? Glendale. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm from Oh, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. One fifteen, yeah. regardless of what he says or doesn't say. People weren't in here for us. I have to oh, yes. so, I'll take a hurricane manager. Some went one was crazy, but no one nowhere. No even. Well, but the six point two the day before, I mean, I'm getting messages from my sister and my brother in law. In the air, it was this, and I said, look, I can tell you the physics. Which could be. It could be. You're there. It could be. If you look at the physics. The ground doesn't move. Storm surges My mom always said, "You live on God's etch sketch." It'll slow down the drain of gentle moral fall. Yeah, every couple like of years, you get a big one. Like it's been right. the lady from Cal um, Tech, who they always go to. Yeah. She was well, saying, like, what well, is the biggest one we've done so far for it? She goes, no, we're actually supposed to get one of these every like five years. So we've been in a drought. So good news is on the other models, it does not significant in and around when the water yeah, table is really low, right there's there no fluid so that's what you can do in between those tactical planes. Where can you go into the model? That's a lot, right? Do you think that having a water break and then having contraction? That additional water? Yes, because you remember, we're within the area of the level. Right there was a different magazine box. For more than three days in a row, you've got to go to the water table. So if you're going to have a propaganda, then more water being in Mississippi, right? Sorry. Which would have raised the level to the lows. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Well, if we could open the more hands, we would have put more water into the basin. Yeah. 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 So yeah. 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 It would yeah. still have yeah. more yeah. into the But you wouldn't have that base. You wouldn't have any place to put you. There are any base to back up. You're a supervisor. Yeah, but the thing is, the storm comes up through the chapel line, through the city. And you got Mississippi River water coming down, and then you've got storm yeah, water coming up. That's how you start. 
Thank you all for gathering with us again today. I'm sorry we're running just a few minutes late. We had a lot of information to, to deliver in our UCG meeting. Um, I'm joined uh, this afternoon uh, by John Long uh, from FEMA, Dr. Sean Wilson, who is the Secretary of Department of Transportation and Development, Chip Klein uh, from the uh, Coastal Protection and Restoration Authority, uh, Secretary Marquita Walters from the Department of Children and Family Services, the Adjutant General, Major General Glenn Curtis of Louisiana Army National Guard, and uh, Colonel Jim Wascom, who is the director here uh, at GOSAP, and we're also joined by Colonel Murphy uh, from the Corps of Engineers. Um, this system, as you all know, has been upgraded uh, to Tropical Storm Barry. Uh, it continues uh, uh, to trend in a slightly more easterly uh, track. Uh, it's important to note uh, that this system is just starting to get organized uh, and that the Gulf remains uh, very warm and, and warmer than it needs to be to feed uh, energy into the storm uh, and allow for uh, it to increase its uh, uh, intensity. Uh, we're anticipating a Category 1 hurricane at landfall which at this time we believe will be Saturday morning uh, and will be in the central uh, coastal area in and around Morgan City. Uh, obviously there will be updates between now and then and everyone needs to pay attention to, uh, to the track. Uh, but however, we shouldn't be focused primarily or exclusively, I should say, on that track. This is gonna be a major weather event uh, for a huge portion of the state of Louisiana. Uh, and the more information we get, uh, the more concerned we are it's gonna be an extreme rain event uh, for a large portion of the state. Uh, rainfall totals of 10 to 15 inches are possible and with locally higher amounts uh, expected in some areas uh, on an isolated basis. The heaviest rainfall will likely occur uh, Friday through Sunday morning. Uh, due to the uncertainty in the track, uh, there is a storm surge threat for all of south and southeast Louisiana. I would remind everyone this is the 258th consecutive day of the flood fight on the Mississippi River. Uh, that is the longest in history. Uh, and if Tropical Storm Barry becomes a hurricane as we fully expect it will, this will be the first time uh, that we've had a hurricane make line, landfall in Louisiana while the Mississippi River uh, was at flood stage. Uh, and it isn't just the Mississippi River. We have elevated river levels across Louisiana. Uh, we are looking at storm surge of three to four feet lasting 12 hours um, around the Mississippi River. Uh, that's actually good news relative to yesterday. Uh, because as you will recall, the prediction was for a water level at the Carrollton Gate uh, to reach 20 feet. Uh, that has been revised downward to 19 feet. Uh, and while that's a relatively slight difference, um, it has resulted in a new forecast that calls for no water over topping any portion of the levee on the Mississippi River. Uh, 
uh, that's obviously uh, good news and, and uh, we're encouraged by that change. Uh, however, um, with more intensification and a change in the track, uh, that certainly could go back the other way, but, but the forecast has certainly improved. We are still at risk of significant flooding in south and southeast Louisiana. Uh, whether it comes from rain or from the river, water is water. Um, and uh, we are encouraging everyone to take this very, very seriously. Um, and search and rescue teams, boats, and high water vehicles have been uh, pre-positioned across the state. Uh, we are leaning forward. Um, and when I finish speaking in just a few minutes, you're going to hear from uh, the Adjutant General about certain preparations uh, that he uh, and the uh, National Guard are making. You're also going to hear from Secretary Sean Wilson about some actions being taken by DOTD. Um, and then you will hear from the Department of Children and Family Services about uh, sheltering. Uh, and then we will obviously uh, take your questions as well. I want you to know that this morning uh, I was able to speak with FEMA Acting Administrator Peter Gaynor. Uh, and I have signed off and requested a federal a declaration of emergency uh, pre-landfall. I also want to go over uh, quickly those areas that have declared uh, evacuations, uh, including Calcasieu uh, Parish, a partial evacuation in lower-lying areas um, south of Lincoln Road. Uh, East Feliciana Parish has a voluntary evacuation uh, for residents residing along the Amy River. Uh, in Jefferson Parish, there was a mandatory evacuation for residents in Lower Line Lafitte, Crown Point, and Veritaria. Uh, the city of Grand Isle uh, has a mandatory evacuation starting at 12 p.m. Uh, today and a 10 o'clock curfew uh, this evening. Lafouche Parish has a voluntary evacuation south of Leon Terrio floodgates. Uh, in Washita Parish, uh, they're communicating with uh, uh, evacuating parishes in affected areas as to their evacuation status and the need to exit point-to-point -point agreements and so what, what we're talking about there uh, for example is uh, Blackman's Parish that I'll get to shortly has a point-to-point -point agreement with Washington Parish as it relates to sheltering uh, when there are evacuations out of Blackman's uh, Parish um, and speaking of Blackman's Parish uh, they do continue to have their mandatory evacuation south of Marvin and Oakland. Blackman's Parish is always uh, also already evacuated uh, the jail on the east bank of the Mississippi River uh, and also the River Bend nursing home evacuation is complete. In Tashville Parish, there are voluntary evacuations possible below LA-22. Uh, and in Vermilion Parish, there's voluntary evacuations issued um, for the lower portion of that parish. We will be making uh, an announcement later this afternoon about office closures, state office closures um, that, that will occur tomorrow. Uh, obviously, we remain in constant contact and coordination with local officials and all the parish offices of emergency preparedness. Uh, we are uh, filling their requests for assistance uh, as, as quickly as they come in and we are able uh, to do so. Uh, this is obviously gonna be a very significant weather event for a big part of Louisiana. Uh, and if you've not already done so, I am encouraging, I'm imploring residents to prepare uh, now. It is, it is not too late, uh, but it won't be uh, very long from now before we're going to have tropical storm winds that will impact our state uh, and then to be followed by hurricane uh, force winds. It's critical that you monitor updates and heed the advice of local authorities. Um, it is possible that additional evacuations, whether mandatory or voluntary, will be issued. Um, so please heed the advice of local authorities. And as I always say, do not attempt to drive uh, through flooded roads and highways. Uh, when you don't know how deep the water is and whether there is current moving. Um, this, is, this has been, uh, in the last several years at least, the greatest source of, uh, or cause I should say, of fatalities. We also encourage you to visit getagameplan.org for information on how to best prepare yourself and your family. Uh, and also to visit emergency.la.gov emergency 
and 511LA.org uh, for the latest updates and information on road closures. Um, this afternoon, I intend to travel to Chalmette and to New Orleans. Um, and then later this evening, I intend to uh, get to Morgan City. And when I travel, I'll be taking uh, my team with me, much of which is, is standing here uh, with me. So at this point, I'm going to ask uh, uh, General uh, Curtis to come up and brief you, followed by Secretary Wilson and then Secretary Walters. And following that, I'll come back up and, and we will take your questions. Well, thank you, Governor. <clears throat> At the Governor's direction, uh, we are taking a very proactive and aggressive approach in our preparations for the storm, um, and we prepared to respond to it. Uh, he's authorized us to mobilize up to 3,000 guardsmen, which we are currently doing. A lot of them are already on duty on station. Current operations, we're doing, we're assisting in some levy operations, assisting with evacuations, moving commodities and water into position uh, to where we think they will be needed. Uh, we're also moving personnel into the greater New Orleans area, over on the North Shore, and then around St. Mary's, uh, Vermilion, Iberia Parishes, and Lafayette South. So that as it makes landfall, if you will, or the, or the river starts to rise in the greater New Orleans area or along the North Shore, we are there to respond. And then again, when it makes landfall, uh, South Lafayette will be there to respond. The type of things we will do <coughs> post-storm, probably the most important, the first one is search and rescue. Uh, we'll do security operations, we'll have commodities set up, we'll be assisting with shelter operations and evacuations. And that's her upset. Thank, thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank you, Governor. Um, just in preparation of both the voluntary and the mandatory evacuations that have been issued, uh, the department has extended the motor assist patrol on our highway system to a 24-hour operation. Uh, we would encourage you to leave and prepare uh, as early as possible and not wait to the last minute. And in doing so, we would encourage you not to drive distracted, not to follow too closely, and take in consideration that there are a number of construction zones around the state that are on uh, site and are active, and those construction zones may be changing in anticipation of the weather as well. Regarding the potential support services for both evacuation and recovery efforts, we have activated a vehicle staging area at Lamar Dixon in conjunction with the National Guard, as well as in Lafayette, where we have uh, 110 buses uh, placed or being placed before the end of the day. We've also activated our bus contract, our coach contract, which will include uh, paratransit support services that will be stationed at both VSAs to serve the southeast and the southwestern portion of the state. And that contract will give us up to 700 buses over a staggered period of time as they are needed. Um, we've also lifted the tolls on the uh, LA-1 bridge for folks who are evacuating from Grand Isle or individuals who are needing to go down and secure uh, their camp so you will have free flow and passage on that toll structure. As the governor said, we do not take uh, lightly driving through standing water. Just not long ago in this state, someone died recently this year from driving through standing water. DOTD has evacuated folks driving through standing water and as such, we have been checking every pump station for particularly low-lying areas like the Acadian underpass. There are four roads currently uh, in New Orleans that are still closed because of water from the previous events. And so please do not drive through standing water, adhere to the high water signs and the barricades that have been placed and pre-positioned. Uh, we will continue to monitor uh, the pump stations and make sure that we have manual control there as long as it is safe. Um, and at the end of the day, remember, with that much water that the governor mentioned, no pump station is gonna be able to handle all of that water in short periods of time. So. Do not drive through standing water and uh, pay attention to 511 LA.org where you can see all of the closed roads uh, because of standing water before you depart. Thanks, Sean. Marquita. Good afternoon. While this remains a local storm, right now we want you to work with your local EOP to know where your local parishes are. We are preparing as a state to open the mega shelter in um, Alexandria so that we can receive people that um, will have to come in from search and rescue or from critical needs. 211 is your best, easiest <coughs> call to make to find out about local sheltering capacity, where you can go and when you should, we should um, go there. There are general population shelters being opened across the state. There are Red Cross shelters opening across the state. So it's important for you to look to that local um, 211 call or your local parish to hear 
and then the state has great capacity in North Louisiana to shelter those residents that will need that in, um, in critical needs. Thank you, and uh, when I was up earlier, I forgot to uh, to mention that we have Commissioner Strain here from the Department of Agriculture and Forestry, and thank you very much, Commissioner Strain, uh, uh, for all the work that you're doing. Okay, at, at this time, we are happy to take questions, and <coughs> Greg Hilburn is first. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Governor. So, I know you're looking at the big picture, everything, but what is your biggest concern at this point? Well, look, the biggest concern is this is going to be a major rain event across a huge portion of Louisiana. Um, and we don't have to wait until the rain falls for the rivers to fill up because they're already full. Uh, and, and so that's obviously a concern. Look, there are three ways Louisiana floods. Storm surge, high rivers, and rain. We're gonna have all three. Uh, and, and it won't just be the Mississippi River. We can, we can anticipate, for example, the Comete and Amy rivers in this area. Uh, you know, so, so and, and, and more was across the North Shore and across uh, central Louisiana. So, so those are, are our biggest concerns. Uh, obviously, we uh, are uh, relieved that the forecast for the river level um, in, on the Mississippi uh, in New Orleans has changed for the better. However, there is still a slight possibility uh, that with rapid intensification of the storm accompanied with a change in its um, path uh, that, that you go back to having a, a really bad case scenario uh, with respect to the Mississippi River too. Uh, now, again, we that forecast has improved for the better and, and we make decisions based on what, what we can um, uh, expect. But, but for all of those reasons, um, we're at, I'm encouraging everyone across the state of Louisiana to take uh, this storm very, very seriously. Um, and the actions that we're taking uh, including those outlined just a moment by the National Guard, by BCFS, and by DOTD, are uh, those that, that uh, we believe are prudent based upon our experience in 2016, but also with respect to what we saw uh, with Hurricane Harvey um, uh, in 2017. So, so we, we've got a, a good ways to go uh, to get through this event. Uh, it will be upon us uh, sooner than normal. And everything about this storm is just a little different than what we typically uh, deal with. Uh, and, and so we, we take nothing for granted. Governor, Ms. Lincoln? Governor um, have the scenarios been run regarding the river rise and the amount of water? Have they been done at the water campus? Have the computer models been done? Because, I mean, we used to come in for the drills and things to know what was potential and this is this is huge. How bad can it be? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to let ask uh, Chip Klein to come up and, and give um, some detailed explanation and, and answer to the question. However, I can tell you that the National Weather Service, the Corps of Engineers, uh, the Water Institute of the Gulf, and CPRA have all been working diligently together uh, to run models and, and models based on different. Uh, scenarios, uh, as especially as the forecast change, so that we we have an idea of what uh, to expect. Um, and, and again, uh, the, the situation today, based on the forecast, uh, is not quite as, as serious as it was yesterday, uh, with respect uh, to the Mississippi River, uh, at least. Uh, but with respect to flooding that's going to be caused by rainfall, it remains extremely serious. And and the source of the water. Uh, doesn't make much difference. Water is water, and, and if it's in your home, if it's in, on the streets and highways, if it's in your business, uh, obviously uh, that is a major event. But I'm going to ask uh, uh, Chip Klein uh, from CPRA to come up and give you a little more answer to that question. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I, think the, I think the governor pretty much covered it, but after every forecast that the National Weather Service issues, CPRA in conjunction with LSU and the Water Institute of the Gulf rerun these what we call these ad cert models to determine where these impacts are going to mostly be uh, focused on across the coast. And so what we're looking at right now is what the governor said is mostly due to heavy rainfall. We do not anticipate any levees along the Mississippi River being overtopped. We do not anticipate any levees within the hurricane protection system around the greater New Orleans area being overtopped. Uh, there are 
floodgates that are currently being closed across the greater New Orleans area. Additionally, there are floodgates within the Morganza of the Gulf Hurricane Protection System that are being closed. Um, but as the governor said, I think our main concern right now is the amount of rainfall will be associated with this event. There is a storm surge associated that these models are showing. It's about one to three feet. Uh, most heavily impacted areas will follow in the south central portion of the state. But as these models come out after each one run that we do in conjunction with LSU and the Water Institute, we are sharing those model runs with local levy districts and local parishes so that they understand the risks they face. Thank you, Chair. Any other questions? <clears throat> well, we anticipate having another Unified Command Group meeting tomorrow at 11. And so we will uh, also go ahead and, and give you notice now that we anticipate having our next press availability at 1230 tomorrow. Um, now, I always say you prepare for the worst uh, and you pray for the best. I happen to believe in the power of prayer, and so I encourage people around Louisiana to join their prayers uh, tomorrow. And so I want to thank you again for attending today, and I encourage everyone to be as careful as they can possibly be. Thank you. Oh, I can't get the thank you, love. Did you have enough battery? <laughs> yeah. For now. For now. We run out of power.